Hello, this is uh, Attorney Brown Pendergraph with the Pendergraph Firm, and this is a follow-up to my last video on uh, legal requirements for remote notarizations in Maryland. So the Maryland Office of the Secretary of State, they've actually just issued their own guidance for, a, uh, for I guess, remote notarizations per Hogan's order. So they issued it as of today, April 10th, 2020. So uh, I guess this is much better guidance than the guidance that I've provided in, in my video. Well, this is coming directly from the Secretary of State. So these guys definitely have much more a, uh, I guess, credibility and standing than I do. So uh, listen to these guys. That being said, my video was awesome. So uh, everything in here, for the most part, I actually covered before they did. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking maybe someone in that office uh, uh, wa watch my video before they came up with this because um, you'll see, man, I was I was an accurate dude. But there was um, so yeah, I just wanted to uh, to bring this to your attention. So if you're a notary, you need to check this out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to this uh, to this um, to what I'm looking at now. I'm going to put a link to it in my uh, I'm going to put a link to it in the description so you guys can go. So you notaries out here, you can go check that out. That being said, if you watch my last video, then uh, for the most part, we've covered just about everything in here. So I'm really not even going to go through all of this. But that being said, there are some things in here that my video did not cover. So I'm going to highlight those things. So if you haven't watched that video, uh, I suggest you go and you go and watch it. But I'm going to highlight the things here that um, my video did not cover. And there's really, there's two things. Well, two, in fact, there may be three key things, actually. Let me let me make that three. All right, so so let's see. Uh, where, where were they? Where were they? Boom, I did not mention this in my last video. Here it is. Uh, you may not charge more than $4 for each remote online notarial act using <laughs> online notarial. I can't even talk anymore. Online Ontario Act using communication technology, um, which is the same as uh, the fee that may be charged when performing an in-person act. So you cannot charge more than $4. All right. So let's see. What else is here that uh, I did not? Oh, okay. I did not cover this. Boom. Right here. Communications technology. Now, in my last video, I think I mentioned, um, you know, I think I said, I think I said uh, Zoom was an example of a software you could probably use, you know, right? Uh, uh, Zoom or uh, uh, FaceTime. Um, specific, but now the Secretary of State in their guidelines just said, you know what? We don't rock with Zoom. We think Zoom is uh, insecure. So um, Zoom is not, uh, Zoom is not good. Um, now, here's, here's another uh, 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 here's another thing that, um, my video did not mention that the vendor that you use, they must be a United States company that has been operating in the United States for at least three years. Um, all right. So, uh, again, United States company it's been operating for at least three years. Uh, let's see, let's see anything else in here that, uh, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So uh, more guidelines here. So guideline A, the notary must ensure that the audio visual communication used to witness the witness the signing of the document is recorded and retained. So uh, essentially, um, uh, yeah. I th so I think it's essentially it's best practice for um, notaries to uh, uh record again i think it's said in the in the order it said that the notary can uh can create a record or they can i guess direct another person to create a record and i was saying that it would be best practice for notaries to uh not just you know direct another person to retain the record but for notaries to actually like keep the record themselves looks to me like the uh the secretary of state is essentially agreeing with me on with point a here so if you're a notary it's up to you to uh uh keep a uh, audio visual, um, uh, what's it called? Recording. And, and it must be retained. Doesn't say how long it must be retained. It just says it must be retained. So uh, I'm assuming that means forever. So, um, retain it forever. Uh, let's see. After signing the document, the signer must immediately transmit the signed document to the notary. Uh, again, so there's, there is, uh, um, so th there's no delays here, essentially. It, it must be done 
you must send it to them immediately. So there's no, just because you're doing things online, it's not like, okay, I watch you sign it. So I'm going to notarize this later and then just email it to you later. Now you can't do it later. You got to do it now. Um, let's see. Back to upon complete notarization. Let's see. Blah, blah. Uh, it's not physical presence. All right, cool. I actually covered point C in my last video. So again, upon notarizing it, they must, uh, uh, one, they must indicate on the notarial seal that it is a uh, been done. This was done electronically and not in the presence of a notary. And they too must also indicate that in their journal. All right. See, and upon completing a notarization, notary must immediately transmit the notarized document back to the signer. Again, so things must be done now. They must be done immediately. Um, let's see. Number four. I actually covered this in my last video. This is that uh, this requires the the governor's order requires the uh, uh, for the notaries that are performing these like for these these, uh, I guess, remote notarizations to notify the Secretary of State. Um, they actually have a specific, specific form. I actually want to show you guys what this form looks like. So hold on, let's see if I can open this up so we can show you the form. Uh, let's see, remote notary notification form. All right, bam. Here is the form. There you go. All right, that's the form. Remote notary notification form, nice and simple. All right, now back to the, uh, where was I? All right, back to here. All right, so blah, blah, blah. Anything else here that I did not? All right, so uh, let's see. Yes, this is remote notary still allowed to form in-person notarizations? I can't, uh, yes, of, of course they are, but do they have a list of communication technology vendors? I guess, uh, uh, okay, so they tell you to contact your notary uh, people here. And uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, list of vendors. Okay, so here's a list of vendors you can use. Uh, let's see, Doc Verify, Linda Close, Notarize, Notary Can, Pavasso, Safe Docs, Signix, Worldwide Notary. I guess I guess they're all U.S. companies that have been operating for three years. Other platforms designed for remote notarization, notaries may choose to con not specifically designed for remote notarization that notaries may choose to consider include. Go to meeting, Microsoft Team, Google Meet, Skype. Um, Secretary of State, they do not recommend a specific communication technology. Uh, again, why can't you use Zoom? Uh, uh, Zoom is not a liable platform at this time. They don't think it's secure. And uh, can I charge more than $4 notary fee to cover my communication technology vendor costs? No, you cannot. You cannot charge more than $4 to uh, cover your communication technology vendor costs. That's just your cost of doing business. You can't pass that off to, on to other people, I guess. All right. So there you have it. Um, so uh, there we go. There's that there's that update. So I'm going to put a link to this in the description below for you guys to uh, see it yourself. All righty. Thanks for watching.